River tonight. It's uh, exciting to be together and worship the Lord with uh, with joy and excitement on our uh, the Sunday after Easter. You know, last Sunday we we said it, and today let me say it again, and I'll hear you respond. Christ is risen. He, let's hear it again. Christ is risen. Yes, he is, and we serve a risen Savior. What a blessing that is. We'll start tonight with uh, our call to worship, just uh, Psalm 150, and then we'll join in some singing and uh, worship in that way. So Psalm 150, and I'll read the little bit lighter parts, and you read those bold white sections. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let's pray together. Thank you, Lord Jesus for the marvelous um, joy, that gift of joy that we can receive because you have risen from the dead. You are alive. You took care of our sins at the cross and to show that it was enough, that it was finished. Three days later, you rose from the dead. So thank you, Lord. Thank you that we can celebrate that today. We can hear your word and we can rejoice. Lord, lead us in this time by the power of your spirit. For we pray in your precious name, the name of Jesus. Amen. William, come and lead us in some worship. And I see Naomi and her family have just arrived. So uh, there's and others are here. They've walked over. So wonderful. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. We are <coughs> uh, We are just going to uh, worship God and praise him. Amen. As usual. Uh, I've been away. I'm glad to be back in your midst and to see all of you. Especially during this time of Easter resurrection. So uh, I welcome everybody who wants to sing just to come. There's no uh, specific choir. Amen. This is a common choir. <laughs> So we are going to sing, and uh, we're just going to worship God together. We're going to sing that song, How Excellent Is Your Name. And I believe most of you already know the song. Probably we sang three to four times here. It's so powerful when you remember, you know, uh, how God redeemed us from the power of the devil. Amen? We just thank God for uh, that name is excellent. It's so powerful. It's so merciful.
Excellent is your name, O Lord. How excellent is your name, O Lord. How excellent is your name, how excellent is your name, how excellent is your name, O Lord. How excellent is your name how excellent is your name how excellent is your name oh lord how wonderful how wonderful is your name oh lord how wonderful how wonderful is your name oh lord hey, hey, hey. How wonderful is your name, how wonderful is your name, how wonderful is your name, oh Lord, hallelujah, how wonderful is your name, how wonderful is your name, how wonderful is your name. How merciful is your name, O oh Lord. How merciful, how merciful is your name, O oh Lord. Come on again. How merciful is your name, O oh Lord. Oh, how merciful is your name, how merciful is your name. How merciful is your name, O oh Lord? How merciful is your name? How merciful is your name? How merciful is your name, O oh Lord? How mighty is your name, Jehovah? How mighty! How mighty is your name, O oh Lord. Oh, how mighty is your name. How mighty is your name. How mighty is your name, O oh Lord. How mighty is your name. How mighty is your name. How mighty is your name. Your name, oh Lord. How mighty is your name? How mighty is your name? How mighty is your name, oh Lord? How mighty is your name? How mighty is your name? How mighty is your name? How lovely is your name, O oh Lord. How lovely, how lovely is your name, O oh Lord. How lovely is your name, how lovely is your name, how lovely is your name, O oh Lord. Oh Lord. How lovely is your name, how lovely is your name, how lovely is your name, oh Lord. Uh, we're still standing and we're just going to uh, sing uh, songs of praise and this is where you will feel free to dance, amen. There is dancing in the house of the Lord.
The mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. The mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Oh, 
Oh, you are the mighty God, the great I am. Alleluia, alleluia. You are the mighty one, the great I am. Alleluia, alleluia. Are the mighty God, the great I am. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. You are the mighty one, the great I am. Alleluia, Alleluia. You are the mighty one, the great I am. Alleluia, alleluia. The mighty God, the great I am. Alleluia. You are El Shaddai, the great I am. Alleluia, alleluia. You are Jehovah Nissi, the great I am. Alleluia, alleluia. The mighty God, the great I am. Alleluia, You are Jehovah Rapha, the great I am. Alleluia, alleluia. You are the good shepherd, the great I am. Alleluia, alleluia. Mighty God, great I am. Alleluia. Things already better, things already better, things 
in that. That was just fantastic. Such a good day. So much there. Rich. Very blessed to be, to be here. First reading is from Revelation chapter 1, verses 4 to 8. And uh, let me read that. John, to the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace to you from him who is, who was, and who is to come and from the seven spirits before the throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, and has made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him. 
Even those who pierced him and all peoples on earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. And so I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. And then the gospel reading for today. And then we're going to, I've got a little story for the kids and all that. So John 20, verses 19 and following. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, or that word means the twin, one of the twelve was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them, though the doors were locked. Peter came and Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. And we'll spend some time looking at that. But kids, all you kids, would you like to come over here? And then we're going to let you go with Joyce afterwards.
How are you tonight? Good? It's a beautiful, beautiful day. I have to make sure that I don't give you the other Easter sermon. There we go. Do you like numbers too? No. No me. <laughs> Only if it's in your bank account, right, Nomi? <laughs> Do you ever look? Now, this would be probably more for those who grew up in Canada, like Al and Darlene or Nicole or Richard. Well, you grew up some of your time in Canada, Marlene. Do you ever drive down the highway and you see 50 kilometers to the next town and you fix it into miles? Turn it back into miles? Jeanette, do you do that too? Because most of you, you grew up with kilometers only, right? But here, many of us grew, and, and it was just when Canada changed for some of us. And so we, we, have, we play the game in our head. Or we say, oh, it's 30 degrees outside. And we go, how hot is that? And we f figure it out, and we think in Fahrenheit, a different type of measurement, oh, it's 86, it's really hot. But 30 degrees feels like it should be cold, right? So we play the game with numbers. And then we, we like to watch numbers play the game, whether it's soccer or hockey or other sports or some of the other things. Do you know what? Here's some for you that like to watch soccer. And maybe you're a little older or you know Neymar. What is his number? Anybody know Neymar's number? Ten, yeah. And what was Pele's number? Pele. Ten. <laughs> oh, he knows, <laughs> he knows the, the, um, the basics of World soccer, yes, that's so good, so good. There was a great, a couple of great hockey players that just died in the last two weeks. One, his name was Mike Bossy, and he wore number 22. And then this week, there was one, his name, he was French, and he was called the flower, La Fleur, and he was number 10. Must be something about that number 10. But there's a story, and it, you could put it to soccer or you could put it to hockey or to any like that, basketball, any of those type of things we watch on television or whatever. There was a man who was a great player. His name was The Rocket. And he wore number nine. And all of the children in Quebec, they wanted that number nine. Neuf. They wanted that on their back. But then there was a young player coming up. And he wore the number nine because he was his hero. But when he came to play with a team in Montreal, the Rocket said, oh, don't wear number nine. Choose your own number. Because the children will want to follow you and be excited for your career. You're such a good athlete. So this man chose the number four. Kath, number four. And his name was Jean Bellevaux. Then he grew up and he was going to leave the team. He was getting older. And there was another young man who came and he wore number four when he was just a little boy. When he was older, when he was a, a young man, he wore number four. Because it was Bellevaux's number. But he took him aside too and he said, don't wear my number. You choose your number because you are a good player. And you will want the children to follow you too. And so that was Le Fleur. And he chose the number 10. There's just something in that. As people follow and they, they like that but he said, no, don't be like me. You be yourself. 
you follow a different number. When I talked to the children, you heard me mention 316. And it comes to mind, sometimes we've seen that at a sports event. They hold a big sign, 316. And it means John 316. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son. Or maybe there's another one. What about 320? Anyone know where that is? 320. Revelation 320 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. It's an invitation to have good fellowship with our God. What about 1-1? One, one? In the beginning was the word, or you could go back. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, yeah. Or what about 323? And fall short of the glory of God. Then you, I get them mixed up, but then 623 is also from Romans, and it is, for the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is what? Eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Oh, we could go through so many of those. And some, some things you're not, maybe you don't like sports, but maybe it's your house number. Joyce told me <clears throat> that for those who are new to Canada, they need to remember, and Marlene could tell us this too, if you're new to Canada, you need to know when your birthday is. Or else, what's the, what birthday does the government give you? January 1st. I think many, many people have January the 1st as their birthday. And then what is your address? Where do you live? And people need to know that. And sometimes, I even do that when I've just moved to a place, right? You put it down on paper so you remember. Or you take your card and you're going to put it into the machine for money? I forgot my PIN number. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Is that? <laughs> That's not mine. But it, no, it's not. <laughs> but you have to remember numbers. Well, an interesting thing. <clears throat> and that's why I asked Al if he remembered 2022 in John. Because... Over the last um, few years, I, you know, I look for a verse for the year. What verse could we, could we study and, and uh, just take for this year? Well, John 2020. We had a year 2020, not two years ago. You know what Jesus says at the beginning of that verse? Peace be with you. He came to his disciples and he said, peace. Then in 2021, the verse in the Bible, John 20, 21, it says, peace be with you. Peace to you. Of course, it's the greeting, shalom, or the greeting, salam, or some of those greetings that are very much meaning peace to you and so forth. But John put it there. He remembered it. He included it. What were the words we needed to hear in 2020 and 2021 when there was such disagreement and misunderstanding and fear and hopeless? What did we need to hear? <laughs> Peace. Peace of the Lord no matter what. No matter what situation we were in. Peace. And then came this year, and I looked, <clears throat> and, and there weren't that many um, chapters, chapter 20 throughout the Bible that had a verse 22. So I looked, and I found it in John, and, and you know what it says? He breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit, 2022. I thought, 
And then he went on and he said, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you do not, they, they are not. And I looked at that and Jesus was giving them, telling them that he is giving them power to proclaim, to share the good news that Jesus Christ gives forgiveness of sins. And as we give that good news, people who receive it are forgiven. And people who do not receive it, they push away God's forgiveness. But he gives us the power to go. The Holy Spirit who lives inside us, who gives us the words to say when we don't know what to say. He gives us the courage to say it when we are fearful. Jesus has empowered us as he empowered his disciples. But there's someone else there we meet. His name was Thomas. Thomas, a disciple, he was not with the others when Jesus came to them. He was not there. And so when they told him, we've seen the Lord, he goes, no, you haven't. I don't believe it unless I can put my fingers into his hands or put my hand into his side. You know, a spear had pierced Jesus' side, right? Unless I can do that, I will not believe. And then Jesus came eight days later, it says. Eight days later, and he said, what was his first words? Yes, peace. Don't be troubled my friends don't be troubled Thomas hey Thomas why don't you put your fingers here why don't you put your hand into my side wow Jesus actually knew what Thomas had asked for and he gave it to him so he would believe and he said my Lord and my God. That's what happens when a person meets the risen Jesus. Worship, faith, trust, and joy just kind of springs because Jesus is in their life. I want to invite you to pray this coming Thursday, well, to pray all week, but to pray this Thursday especially. It's what Muslims call the night of power. When they really want to meet God and Christians say, oh, you can meet God by meeting Jesus Christ, the risen Lord and Savior. And so we're going to have a, a bit of a service here on that night for prayer, a lot of prayer and we are going to live stream it so that some other churches in Calgary and other places can watch and join in the prayer. Because it's when we meet Jesus, who is risen from the dead, that's when our lives are changed. It says in verse 31 of chapter 20. You heard me read it before, but it says, these things are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. John wrote down in his, in the Bible, in his, in his book, and I've got one of these for each, I think, there's enough for each of you. Or Joyce has some more that I'll have to grab. But it's the Gospel of John. John wrote down what Jesus taught. What Jesus said. What Jesus did when he died on the cross. He wrote down that Jesus rose again. And he did it in such a way that points to who Jesus is, that he has come to save us. Oh, will you believe 
Jesus today, that he has come. And he says, receive the Holy Spirit. It's a gift to you, a gift to me. To give us empower, give us power to speak his word, to have courage, to know how to take the message of Jesus Christ to others, to love others, to believe. I'll pass, the, I'll put these on the back table afterward, but remember, you remember 316? Remember 1010, I have come that you might have life and have it to the full. He said in 832, if you look through this, whoever, or if you continue in my word, studying my word, you are really my disciples and you will know what? The truth and the truth will set you free. Receive the Holy Spirit in 2022, he says. And then in 2031, oh, not nine years down the road, but right today, these things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ and believing you and me, we have life in his name. Do you want that real life? You want to say goodbye to the sins? Oh, let's pray and put them, let Jesus take them. And give us life. Oh Lord Jesus we thank you. That you have given us your word. That you've given us your promises. And every promise in the book is true. Every promise in the Bible is true. Oh Lord we pray. That you would take our wrong, our sins. You, we believe that you took it to the cross. But as we confess it now, may you remind us that we are washed clean and that we have new life because you have risen from the dead. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesse was asking, Harold, in that passage, what's the meaning for this title? It said, what's behind the numbers? Because <laughs> there's not very many numbers in that, in that uh, reading. I said, you'll find out. <laughs> and um, there we go. Let's take some time to pray. And I would invite us to break into small groups, if we could, just to be in small groups, and to pray and pray in whatever language you're most comfortable in. If you're, if you're comfortable to pray out loud, then please do. And then after we've taken some time to pray, I'll come back here and we will pray the Lord's Prayer, our Father, together. And then we will finish the service. And let me um, just say thank you to William and Rahiba. Thank you. They brought some uh, something for us to eat after. <laughs> and uh, some baklava from Calgary, was it? Oh, Thank you so much. So we're going to have a little bit of that afterwards, after we're finished here. Uh, if the kids didn't eat it all with Joyce. <laughs> so please, can you gather together and just in small groups and we'll pray for each other and for maybe some of the things that are here before us. Okay? Let's pray. My name is Naji and I'm from Iran. I used to be a Muslim and now I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. Join me as we pray for the Azeri people. 
Father God, we right now want to lift up the Azeri people who live in Iran and are scattered all over. And we pray for these 16 plus million people who are a people group of Iran and sometimes don't feel a part of the nation and sometimes feel as outcasts. Father, we pray that you would turn this feeling like outcast into them seeking after you and knowing their worth and value in you, Jesus Christ. We pray, God, for the salvation of these people who are more than 99% Muslim. We pray that you would touch them, save them, bless them, God. Help them to know you, Jesus, for who you are. Remove the veil from their eyes. Open up their ears to your gospel. Open up their hearts to your words. We pray for the believers who are in Iran and in the surrounding areas to go to the Azeri people and share your love and your truth and your message of salvation through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we pray for a mighty move and a revival among the Azeri people. We pray, Father God, for those who feel embarrassed of their heritage. We pray that you would touch them and bless them. And Lord, we pray you would visit them in dreams and visions the Azeris and all the other small people groups of Iran. There's so many, God. We pray for the Persians who already know the truth and already are believers. We pray that they would go out to the people groups like the Azeris and bring the gospel to them. We pray, Father God, that you would open up their hearts to the word that will set them free through Jesus Christ. We thank you, God, that there's a Bible and a Jesus film and other tools in the Azari language. And we pray, God, that they would get in the right hands for the people who need to hear the truth in their own heart language, in their own native language. We pray for the programs who are already being broadcast in Azari. And we pray that you would bless these ministries as they are uh, preaching your word right into the heart language of these people and we pray that you would multiply their efforts bless these ministries and that the people would tune in and hear the gospel in their own language at the right time we thank you god for what you're going to do with the azari people and what you've already done and we lift them up to you asking you for their salvation and blessing in the mighty name of jesus christ amen
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord, Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remind you to come afterwards. The next door we'll let you know. But do you want to come and we'll start singing? You just start singing. And then we'll do another song another day. But you start singing whatever, and we'll join in, and the kids will be coming this way. And
Halatai Alfisama Isimtaki Futukulu Rabuna Yahweh Alfisama Isimtaki Futukulu Yesu Masia Alfisama Esimtaki Futukulu We lift your name, 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 we lift your name. When I say we lift your name higher, we lift your name higher, we lift your name, we lift your name, we lift your name, shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah. There you go. We lift your name, 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 lift your name. Jesus' name, we lift your name. We lift your name, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, shout hallelujah. We lift your name, Jesus' name, Jesus' name, Jesus' name, higher, higher. Haya haya, haya haya, haya haya. Lift Jesus haya, haya haya, haya haya, haya haya. We lift your name, lift your name. We lift your name, we lift your name. Jesus name, Jesus name, Jesus name. Jesus name, shout hallelujah, 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 who has the final say, Jehovah has the final say. Who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. Jehovah turn my life around. Jehovah turn my life around. He makes a way, he has the way. Jehovah has the final say. Jehovah turn my life around. Jehovah turn my life around. Jehovah me and the sins no more. Jehovah has the final say. Who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. Oh, who has the final say? Jehovah turn my life around. My life around. Jehovah turn 
my life I run, my life I run. Jehovah, I now say. I think we are done. <laughs>